Good morning. Thank you for joining me with this devotional time. And today I decided to do something a little different and come over to the sanctuary. There's days that I really enjoy being in this space and I find it to be such a worshipful place where I experience God. So our scripture today comes from Hebrews, the second chapter, the first through the fourth verses. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through the angels was binding, every violation and disobedience received its punishment. How can we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs and wonders and various miracles and by the gifts the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. This text from Hebrews is warning us to pay attention because we've been given this great gift of salvation that comes from God and to pay attention to things. Now I'll admit today that I don't always pay attention to things. Um, and sometimes that's okay because we can have small mistakes that don't matter much. I've never been a person who was really good with grammar, um, especially in writing. I'm not very good at putting commas and periods in the right place. And that's not a huge thing. No one has ever had a life-changing event because of a lack of grammar. But then there comes to be other things in our lives that we must pay attention to. You know, um, I don't do it much often anymore, um, but I used to rotate my tires a lot whenever I was younger. And you have to be very careful. It doesn't require a whole lot of thought but whenever you put the tires back on, you have to make sure that those lug nuts are properly tightened because the consequence, if one of those tires would come loose, could be dangerous and potentially deadly. The writer of Hebrews maybe puts this into pretty strong language about not ignoring the message of salvation. But I think it's an important warning to those of us who are God's people is to not take things for granted. Maybe we have grown up in the church and spent so many times that we just appreci don't appreciate things to the depth that we once do. You know, as we enter into this beautiful sanctuary or into our own house of worship, wherever it may be, do we take stock of the place in which we go? Do we walk into the sanctuary and know that we are in the presence of God? I feel the presence of God here this morning. Now, I also feel the presence of God in my office and when I'm walking around. I feel the presence of God other places besides the church. However, there's something special about this place. There's something special about worshiping God in this place and knowing that God is with us. You know, in Old Testament times, um, there was the temple in Jerusalem that was built by Solomon. And for many, many years, that was the worship space for the Jewish people. However, that was not always the case. The temple would be later on destroyed. But still today, the bottom of the temple, the one surviving wall, is a holy space that many people still go to pray at. However, before Solomon built this wonderful temple, there was the tent of meetings. Because when the Israelites first left Egypt, they needed a portable place to worship. And so the tabernacle would go wherever they went, and they would worship God there at those places. And I think that's very important um, because um, I, for one, am leaving in a few days for a week's vacation, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, 
but I'm also reminded that I'm still a Christian even whenever I'm not here at the church. Um, you know, I'm sometimes envious of folks that uh, punch a clock. Maybe I wouldn't be if that was what I did. I can't say for sure. But I am always think it would be wonderful to be able to just simply check out and not have to think or worry about anything um, whenever. But for me, it's kind of hard to do that and to decompress and things. But um, next week, I don't have pastoral responsibilities. I have someone who's on call for me around the church. And so I don't have to worry about those things. Yet, while I'm giving up my pastoral responsibilities for a week, I am not giving up my Christian responsibilities because I am still a Christian and must continue to um, carry myself with those things in mind and live and act like I should. You know, because back to this tabernacle, it moved with the people of Israel. And then later on, the ten of meetings would wind up staying at Shiloh for years and years and years, and it wouldn't be to David's time that it moves to Jerusalem. And then later with Solomon, the temple would be built. You know, because God was everywhere. And when David first approached God about building him that house of worship, God initially said no to David and said that it will be your son's responsibility. And so, you know, one of the things that I think is so wonderful about these, um, these um, online meditations is that I don't know who all is listening to them. I know there's a lot of folks here from Hedrick's Grove that does that, but there's people um, who go to other churches and live in other states even, and hopefully everyone that is listening has a house of worship. But if you don't, you know, maybe you should find one close to you. But appreciate that space. And anytime you go to it, uh, take a moment to acknowledge that God is there and that God is in that space and in that place that worship is not simply going through the motions, but something far more important. Last Sunday was Trinity Sunday. We talked about that a lot. And in this text, it says that God testified to us through signs, wonders, various miracles by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed to his will. And so I ask you to think for a moment, what gifts are you giving? What gifts do you have? You know, there is so much untapped gifts and abilities out there. You know, we're in a very scary time in which some churches are closing and are deciding which they should remain open in things. And I wonder how many people are in the community that could give gifts to the church that could do things to be part of something greater than them own selves. And it kind of goes against the culture in which we live a little bit because the culture is sort of training us to look after what is in our own best interest. But maybe if we take that attitude, we should take it further and realize that it is in fact in our best interest to do something for the wider world. And to acknowledge that the church is the embodiment of the people and that there are a lot of people out there and a lot of people who could use the peace of knowing Christ and don't take that message of salvation for granted. Because while we are Christians, we are God's people and it is an awesome gift that we should never take lightly or forget about. Now, I'll admit, over the years, there has been gifts that people have given me that I greatly appreciated at the time. 
And over time, some of the interest of those gifts fade, and that is a natural thing because our tastes change. The toys that I played with as a child, I no longer play with today. The um, gifts that I once received, um, I don't appreciate. And that's okay because those are temporal things, things that fade with our changing tastes. But salvation is the one gift that we can be given when we're young or when we're old, but that never loses its value, that never depreciates our tastes, should not change because we have been given that gift of life from Almighty God. And we must be thankful for that and do what we can for the betterment of God's people. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your presence among us at this time. Lead us, guide us, and help us to do your will always. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.